Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Why don't we all stand in the house of the Lord? Amen. Why don't we clap our hands to Jesus today? And uh, isn't God good? Isn't God faithful? Amen. We had some technical difficulties with the live, but we're back online. And it's amazing what you can do when you just start pushing buttons. And God is good and greatly to be praised. Why don't we take a moment, shake somebody's hand, and uh, let them know, hey, you got COVID, so do I. It's all good. Love you. God bless you. And uh, hopefully they don't ban this video because I use the word COVID. Bless the Lord. And uh, in the meantime, our singers will make their way to the platform uh, while you're shaking somebody's hand and loving on them. Amen. God bless all of our online. We love you. Praying for you. Feel better in Jesus' name. And uh, looking forward to seeing you when you get better. And for all of you that are here today, shake somebody's hand, love on them. Amen. No fear. Hallelujah. Faith over fear. Yeah, yes, we have Jesus with us. So glad to be in the house of the Lord today. God is so good, and uh, God is so faithful. Amen. God is so amazing. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is so good to us. Amen. In the midst of every lying devil, God is still good. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Love on them. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. All my homies are in the house. All my backups in the house. Amen. Feels good to be in the house of the Lord. Ah, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't we find our way to our our seat and don't get too comfortable. We're getting ready to worship the Lord Jesus. Anybody grateful for how good God has been to their lives? Amen. I know I'm grateful. So blessed. Hallelujah. It's not accident. It's the blessings of God. And uh, we are about to worship the Lord together. But before we do that, why don't we pray? Amen. Let's get ourselves into the mindset of worship and let's begin our service with prayer. Let's ask Jesus to be with us in a special way. He's here. But I want all of us to be able to feel his presence. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this incredible opportunity. What a blessing to be gathered together with your people. It is a blessing, Jesus, that you've given us another day of life. You are good to us, God. You are so good to every one of us. We have more than we need. God, you've always been faithful. You deserve all of my gratitude. Nobody loves me the way you do, Jesus, and I'm not ashamed to love you back. You deserve my hands. You deserve my voice. You deserve it all, Jesus. You are a blessing to my life, and I want you to know that I love your presence. I want your presence. I want to feel your presence. I want your will in this service, God. Have your way today, Jesus. Have your way today, Jesus. Do whatever you want to do. Touch someone's heart. Touch someone's mind touch someone's spirit deliver somebody today Jesus and everybody shout amen amen why don't you worship with us here today in the presence of the great God oh come on every hand raised come on we love you Jesus Father all of heaven loves your name sing louder let this place erupt with praise can you hear it the sound of heaven touching us the sound of heaven touching us our father all of heaven wrote your name sing louder let this place erupt with praise can you hear it the sound of Touching the sound of heaven touching. 
car walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls Spirit break out, heaven come down, spirit break out. Come on, somebody clap your hands you, unto Jesus. Jesus. God, we love you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody extend your faith unto heaven right now. God, we want your will on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, if you have a need in the house, come on, stretch out your hands to heaven and let them know, God, let your will be done in my life right now. Touch my heart. Touch my mind, Jesus. Touch my body. Touch this need. Answer this prayer, God. You're the only one that can. This is why we're here today, Jesus. We want your will. We believe in your will. We believe in you, Jesus. You're the same God today and the same God tomorrow. Help me see the victory you already see. Let my faith be today what it will be tomorrow when I've seen the victory you already see oh jesus i believe oh we need a miracle you are the miracle maker god of the impossible there is no power greater Exceeding, abundant, beyond what we could ask or think, we call on your name, Jesus. Come on, let's call on his name right now. If you need a miracle, today is the day that it can happen. Thank you, Jesus. By the power of your name, all for your glory the sick are healed the soul is filled the battle has been won on your promise i stand and in faith i believe it that what i pray in your name it's already done oh let your will be done Oh, 
miracle maker, God of the impossible. There is no power greater, exceeding, abundant, beyond what we could ask or think. We call on your name. upon you right now Jesus send your favor and your miracles and your blessings down right now you get the glory Jesus in the waiting you get the glory in the healing you get the glory in the breaking you get the glory breakthrough you get the glory Lord in the waiting you get the glory in the healing in the healing you get the glory in the breaking in the breaking you get the glory in the breakthrough you get the glory the glory, you get 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 the glory, we need a miracle. The miracle maker, God of the impossible. There is no power greater, exceeding, abundant, beyond what we could ask for. Thing we call on your name. We call on your name. We need a miracle. You are, you are the miracle maker. There is no power greater, exceeding, abundant, beyond what we could ask or think. We call on your name. 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 Hallelujah. We call on your name, Jesus. Jesus, every hand lifted right now. Let's give him honor and glory. Let's believe that the miracles are already done. Let's thank him in advance for what he's about to do today in the service. We call on your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come You're on, worthy. every hand lifted right now. Hallelujah. Jesus is in the house right now. Come on, why don't we worship him right now? Jesus, we love you. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Worship is not a spectator thing. It's a participation thing. We all worship Jesus. Lord, we need you. We love you. There's nobody like you. God, we need a miracle. There's sickness, God. Amen. There's sickness. There's people sitting at home sick. There's people here sick. God, touch their bodies by the authority of your mighty name. There's, there's deliverances that need to take place, God. You can do the miracle. This is why we're calling on you right now, Jesus. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. You guys are getting crazy right all now. All right. Well, things are changing here. Uh, uh, well, I'm trying to preach right now. I don't know now. how Praise many God. of you all know that today is pastor's birthday, but today is pastor's birthday. And uh, we won't go into the age. You may be starting to feel a little bit elder. Um, but, yes, we had something we wanted to give you for your birthday oh, in appreciation. Thank the, you. The, the church body. Um, we want you to... Um, we want you to look good. Uh, you've done a, you're doing an amazing job. Well, my God, you does are that a thing man of God. So you know, I lost 20 pounds, right? Like, a that little too in that endeavor. Thank you, Jesus. So, Thank you so, so much. Probably right to sing happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate this. Listen, church, I love you guys. Thank you for continual trying to make me look presentable. Um, yeah, I'm just a regular guy serving an amazing God. And I just love him. So thank every one of you. Thank you for the text messages, the gifts, all of it. Means the world to me. 
Now look at your neighbor and say, pastor's still going to be pastor. And he's fixing to preach. Yes, I am. I'm getting ready to preach. Thank you so much, Brother John. Hold off on the, on the happy birthday part. Uh, yeah, we'll hold off on that. Well, we, I got, we love you, Pastor. Uh, I love y'all. I got a job to do today. Everybody say, Pastor, I got a job to do today. Amen. I got a job to do. And uh, for some, this is preventative. For this, for some, it's going to be revelatory. For others, this is going to keep you out of the gates of hell which is good news. Amen. And it, isn't it good news when you get to go to heaven? Amen. So if I, if I come off strong, just get to know me. I'm actually really chill off the pulpit. It's just sometimes it's like your flesh against the Holy Ghost, and then my flesh is being used by the Holy Ghost to bust down your flesh. And uh, that's just kind of the way it works. I've learned that. Amen. I'm actually pretty chill. Amen. Off the pulpit. But man, do I feel like preaching today. And uh, God has put this on my spirit. I've had this. This is I've had this for five days. I've never had a message for five days. And so I'm like, my God in heaven, this is this is heavy stuff. And everybody said, amen. 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 Keep the sick in prayer. Those that texted me today that you're positive for that COVID stuff. God bless you. You'll be just fine. Uh, just stay focused and you're going to get through it and God's going to bless you. And you're going to be a witness that God is able. Amen. Amen. Tuesday night Bible study. You don't want to miss that. We're continuing to learn about Jesus. And uh, to all of our visitor friends, God bless you. We're so glad you're with us. And uh, we hope that by the end of the service, you're going to say, man, I want to be part of the family. And uh, we just believe in family around here. And everybody said amen. amen. Okay, we're not going to be exhaustive. One verse of scripture. The book of 1 Thessalonians, if you have your Bible. And if you do not, please look to the screen. This is a Bible preaching church, amen, which means that 99.99.100% of the time, I'm going to give you some verse, and if not, it's because I forgot, but I'll get you a verse if you have a question about what I said, amen. I try to keep, uh, I have this bad thing. When we have visiting preachers, the sound guys have it easy. They get like two or three verses. When pastor preaches, he averages 25 to 50 verses, and uh, I just figured, you know, if you haven't read your Bible all week, I'll give you a week's worth. Praise God. And so God's good. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 19. Would you do me a favor and read this with me? One, two, and three. Quench not the spirit. Okay. Quench not the spirit. Now, I want to make, I want to make sure we're all reading this correctly. It does not say quench the spirit. Somebody said amen. It says quench not the spirit. And today with God's help, we're going to talk about this verse. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, is commanding, instructing, advising, the new converts of the Thessalonican church to quench not the spirit. Now, this phrase sounds extremely simple at the surface. But how can you not quench the spirit in a world that has mastered quenching the spirit? Somebody say, help us, Jesus. Today, God has something simple yet life-changing for every one of us, and that is we must understand this verse before we leave. And more than understand, we must fulfill this verse for the rest of our lives. And today, with the help of the Lord, we will begin by breaking down 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19, and then we will see what else God has to say today. The Bible says, quench not the spirit. That word quench there can also be translated to a modern word known as extinguish. We got, well, we used to have fire extinguishers around here, praise God. But, amen, don't, don't tell nobody we don't have those, praise God. It says, extinguish not. In other words, don't do it. Do not extinguish the spirit of God. That's what the Bible says, the Spirit, talking about God's Spirit. 
Now, this verse is fascinating because it is talking to people that are spirit-filled. This is spirit-filled, folks. And, and let me just use this as a side note. This is talking to spirit-filled folks, but can also be applied to people that want to be filled with the Spirit. Because there are people that don't want to be filled with the Spirit the way the Bible says they're filled with the Spirit. They want some other type of Spirit infilling. They want a milder Spirit infilling. They want a sinner's prayer sinner's prayer infilling they want just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he's in you and he's already in you but the bible says quench not the spirit let's give him some bible here brother john 3 11 of the book of matthew wants us to know that there is a baptism of holy ghost and fire the bible wants us to know in acts 2 and 4 jump over brother john let's show them here they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Well, Pastor, I can't be filled with the Holy Ghost. The reason you can't be filled with the Holy Ghost is not because God doesn't want to fill you with the Holy Ghost. It's because you don't want the Holy Ghost the way the Holy Ghost wants to fill you. I said that people don't get the Holy Ghost because when the Holy Ghost starts moving on them and the Holy Ghost, they start feeling the Holy Ghost. They like it. It feels great. It feels good. But then when the Holy Ghost tries to get a hold of their tongue, when the Holy Ghost tries to speak in other tongues flowing through their bodies, all of a sudden they start saying no to the Spirit and they start telling the Holy Ghost, I don't want to get the Holy Ghost like that because I don't want to look weird. I don't want to sound weird. I don't want that. Quench not the Spirit. Can I tell you that the Bible says that our God is a consuming fire, 1229 of Hebrews. And if our God is a consuming fire, it is mind-bending that God, the God that can consume anything, the God that can create anything, the God that can heal anything, the God that can deliver from everything, the God that knows everything, that the God that spoke to Moses through a burning bush, can be quenched. Can I tell somebody here today, if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, that was not your graduation ceremony. Well, pastor, I spoke in tongues. I'm glad you spoke in tongues. I'm glad you started your new birth journey. I'm glad you showed us that you're alive in the spirit. I'm glad you began this walk with God. But can I tell you here today, that is not your graduation. That is your starting point. That's where this thing starts, not where this thing finishes. Hey, can I tell you? Oh, help me, Lord. I'm, I'm fixing to get in trouble. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to get in trouble. Because I've been in church for 16 years. And I am somebody that likes to sit back and I like to observe. And can I tell you, I've seen people filled with the Holy Ghost. And they've been in church for 20 years. And I bumped into them as new converts. I was a new convert and I bumped into them. And I thought to myself, where are the fruits? Where are the fruits of the Spirit? And the Holy Ghost said, you can't produce fruits of the Spirit when that person has quenched the Spirit. I, can I tell you there's people that can sit in pews year after year after year and they think, my God, I'm going to heaven. But you don't realize you're like Samson. The Holy Ghost has been quenched for years and you don't realize that you can't get over stuff. Some people believe because you speak in tongues once, you've graduated. I'm going to tell you what starts showing progress when you can speak in tongues on Sunday and you can talk right in your own tongue. Oh, I know it's my birthday. Happy birthday to you too. Praise God. I have a responsibility to let you know that you cannot live for God quenching the Spirit. Pastor, why would Paul write this? 
Paul's writing this because God told Paul, Paul, there's people in the church of Thessalonica that have been filled with the Spirit, but they're quenching it. How, 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 how do you quench the Spirit? Hey, listen, I, I told you I've been talking to God for this whole week about this message. And God gave me four simple ways. I ha God gave me four simple ways that you can stop the Holy Ghost fire. You ready for the four simple ways? Hey, can I tell you all fires can be extinguished by cooling, by smothering, by starving, and by interrupting the combustion process. Oh, let's start with cooling. You get the Holy Ghost. You speak in tongues. You get the Holy Ghost. You get with the preaching. You get the Holy Ghost. You go to the altar. You get the Holy Ghost. You lift up your hands during worship. You get the Holy Ghost. And it stirs you to respond. But then you get too cool. I'm too cool to speak in tongues around people. I'm too cool to go to the altar. I'm too cool to lift up my hands and open my mouth and praise God during worship. I'm too cool for this. Yeah, you can get so cool that you get cold. You can get so cool that you go cold on the Holy Ghost. And when you go cold on the Holy Ghost, you quench the Holy Ghost. And you don't realize that before you used to feel the presence of God telling you to lift up your hands and you used to feel the presence of God tell you to respond to the truth that's preached and you used to feel like praying and you used to feel like fasting and you used to feel like hitting the altar but now you don't feel nothing and it's because you're cold the spirit's been quenched and you just think no it's because I'm now a more mature Christian you ain't mature my brother you ain't mature my sister you're a cold carcass so you think it's a small thing when God invites you into the worship service and God tells you you better lift up your hands you better clap your hands you better raise your voice you think that it's mechanics it ain't mechanics it's little gestures of the Holy Ghost to see are you alive or are you still hot or have you grown cold in the spirit somebody say help us Jesus you know another way you can quench the spirit by smothering it with dirt You were made of the dirt, the dust of the ground. The dirt is the type of your flesh. You want to go cold? You want to quench the spirit? Keep scrolling. Uh, come on. Keep watching that Netflix. Keep watching stuff you're not supposed to. Keep going places you're not supposed to. Keep hanging out with people you're not supposed to. Keep doing things you're not supposed to. And then you'll realize why the spirit is quenched. Because you cannot put what's unholy on the holy and expect it to stay hot. I've learned long enough, Brother Mandela. People, people, Pastor, I can't feel nothing. What are you watching? Pastor, I can't feel nothing. What are you listening to? Pastor, I can't feel nothing. Who are you hanging out with? God said, don't quench the spirit. Why are you filling yourself, your time, your schedule, your life with carnality? I'm just telling you how to stop a fire. You know another way you stop a fire, Brother Tanner? By starving it from fuel. You know why we pray? It fuels the fire. You know why we fast? It fuels the fire. You know why we worship? It fuels the fire. You know why we obey the word of God and study the word of God? Because it fuels the fire. When you start taking the very thing that fuels the Holy Ghost fire out of your life, don't be surprised when you're cold. 
Don't be surprised when you can't feel nothing, you can't hear nothing, God can't convict you, God can't talk to you, God can't get you to the altar, God can't get you to lift up your hands, God can't get you to lift up your voice. I'll tell you what's going on. You don't realize you've quenched the Spirit. Somebody say, help us, Lord. The fourth way to destroy a fire is by interrupting its combustion. In other words, distractions, interruptions. I'm going to pray tomorrow. Pastor, tomorrow I start my prayer life. Text message. Oh, 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 what's this? Oh, click, scroll. Oh, oh, I got to get to work. Interruptions, interrupting distractions will rob you from the fire that the Holy Ghost is trying to produce in you. You've got to be intentional about keeping the fire going. You got to be intentional about making sure you're doing what you need to do and not let anything come between you and that fire. Brothers and sisters, I've been living for God for 16 years. And let me tell you, it happens slowly and it happens with little things. It doesn't happen overnight. Nobody just quenches the spirit overnight. It starts simple. It starts with you sitting on truth. Praise God. It starts with not worshiping God when it's time to worship. It starts with not responding to the altar when the Holy Ghost is all up in your business and you're saying, I'm not going to the altar. It starts with little symptoms. And the more you say no to the Holy Ghost, pretty soon it stops talking to you. I remember as a new convert, Brother Mandela, the Holy Ghost spoke to me so loud and so clear that it was like, don't say that, don't go there, don't do that, say you're sorry, bite your tongue, fix this, put this on, take this off, stop watching that, stop listening to that, stop doing that. Holy Ghost was talking to me loud and clear. But all of a sudden, that voice grew dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And I thought, my God in heaven, I must, be, I, I must be a mature Christian. No, my friend, you've told the Holy Ghost no so much, the Holy Ghost stopped talking. Pastor, you got a chapter and a verse for that? I actually do. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 that the Spirit of the Lord will not always strive with man. For he is flesh. Holy Ghost says, you either want me or you want your flesh. You can't have us both. Pastor, I was a, how many times has the Holy Ghost told you to hand out a business card and you don't do it? How many times has the Holy Ghost told you to lay hands on someone and you don't do it? How many times has the Holy Ghost told you, speak into this person's life and you don't do it? Oh God, use me, God, use me. I've been trying to use you and every time I talk to you, you don't do what I ask you. Quench, not the spirit. Hey, can I tell somebody, here's the irony. It's all right. You guys are chewing right now. Praise the Lord. Here's the irony. Here's the irony. We are naturally amazing at quenching the spirit, God's spirit. But we are terrible at quenching our flesh and the demonic spirits that are all up in our lives. We'll starve the Holy Ghost, Sister Julia, but we'll feed our flesh. Jesus. We will starve the Holy Ghost of the Word of God, but we will feed our flesh every magazine on the internet. We will starve the Holy Ghost of worship music and worship, but we will fill our hearts and our flesh with worldly music. We'll starve the Spirit of God, but we'll make sure we protect the influences of the demonic world. Don't you dare preach to me, Pastor, about that Netflix. And don't you dare tell me that Kim Kardashian is a hoochie. Hey, I'm sorry. She is. I didn't call her that. The scripture did. The way she behaves, her sensuality, her way of life, that is what the Bible considers a whore. She's married to one guy, sleeping with another guy. That is a whore. 
Not my opinion. The Bible says that. And see, you know what happens? Isn't it amazing how your flesh will defend Kim Kardashian, but somebody can cuss about Jesus on the job and you don't do a thing about it. Sitting right here, hearing this preaching, you're going, I can't believe he talks about Kim like that. I can't believe you let people talk about Jesus the way they do around you. You want to act like you're, you're, you're being Mr. Captain Virtuous. Well, hey, let's have some virtue here. Defend the holy, not the unholy. Defend the truth, not the lies of the world. Hey, I dare you to quench your flesh. I dare you to quench the demonic influences in your life. And watch what God can do with you. Pastor, you're preaching a bunch of stuff that I don't agree with. That's what your flesh should be telling me. Pastor, is this important? You better believe it's important. Go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse number 1. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I get a call frequently. Pastor, I feel condemned. Quit being carnal. Hey, the Bible is telling us that condemnation is a result of carnality. Pastor, I just feel like the Holy Ghost gave up on me. Holy Ghost didn't give up on you. You gave up on the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost didn't leave you. You let the Holy Ghost die out. Holy Ghost didn't do that to you because to them that are in Christ Jesus, there is no such thing as condemnation. God loved you before you were a saint, before you were baptized in Jesus' name. He loved you so much he died for you before you were his son and his daughter. So there is no condemnation to us. You may struggle, you may fumble, you may fall, you may sin, you may make mistakes, and God says, I still love you. Get up, keep trying, keep walking, keep fighting. Hey, I'm sorry. When I make mistakes, I don't feel condemned. I feel convicted. I feel like I need to do better. I feel like I need to repent. I feel like I need to go back to God. I feel like I need to go to the cross. I feel like I need to ask for mercy. I don't feel condemned. Why am I going to feel condemned? I'm a son of God. And if he loved me before I became his, he, how much more does he love you now? There is no condemnation. Look at this. Let's go a little deeper. Let's, let's dig a little bit because I know our flesh today, they don't like this kind of preaching, but that's all right. Hey Amen. I'm going to keep you out of hell. That's the last thing I do. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us or made me free from the law of sin and death. What's the law of sin and death? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, you're born a sinner. And you stay a sinner for the rest of your life until you die because of the result of your sins. And then after you suffer the consequences of your sin on earth, you go and you burn in a devil's hell. That's the law of sin and death. But the Bible says, if you'll keep the spirit alive in you, you'll be free. You don't go to hell. You can break the curses your family has passed down from generation to generation. You can say no for the first time in your life. This is what blows me away. I, I, I'm trying to figure this out, Brother Tanner. I understand we all have struggles. I understand we all fall short. I understand we all sin. But I'm trying to figure out how you can be of the Spirit and not have freedom. At some point, either the Holy Ghost honors His Word or we've quenched the Holy Ghost. I used to smoke, I used to drink, I used to cuss, I used to do all kinds of whoredoms. I used to be a really, really, really good sinner. And I had no way out of it. But you know who helped me? Jesus helped me. The Spirit helped me. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gave me the power to say no. To change my life. Brother, feed them a little bit more. Let's give them some more, a little bit more meat. We're hungry here today. 
For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. For sin condemns sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Did you catch what the Holy Ghost just said there? In other words, Jesus died so that you can have access to freedom. Jesus died so that you don't have to die a smoker, a vapor, a pothead, a crackhead, a drunk, a liar, a cheater, effeminate, a homosexual. God paid the price so that you can be free. Let's go a little bit deeper. Five, verse five. Look at what the Bible says. For they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. What are you after? More Holy Ghost? Less Holy Ghost. More holiness? Less holiness. What are you after? The Bible says that your mind is going to be after something. Come on. What are you after? Analyze your life and ask yourself, what am I actually chasing? What am I putting my energy, my focus, my mind on? Am I trying to feed my flesh or am I trying to feed the spirit? Well, pastor, I just don't think it's a big deal that I spend two hours on Facebook. I don't know. You know what? Okay. Okay. But let, let's just take a simple example. Are you tracking two hours of prayer and of the word of God? Well, pastor, I'm sharing good content. No, you're appeasing your flesh because you can't get yourself in a room and you can't bow your knees and you can't pray and you can't open the Bible and you can't press through it. And so what you're doing is you're scrolling, trying to bypass time. Hey, just give God what you give Facebook. Just give God what you give YouTube. Just give God what you give everything else. Somebody say he's preaching. Oh, the Holy Ghost is preaching today. Look at verse 6. Well, pastor, I don't want to mind after the things of the Spirit. It sounds so boring. It doesn't sound fun. Okay, well, okay. To be carnally minded is? The most merciful preachers tell you what God says. This pastor just wants us to be ultra spiritual. I'll just settle for being spiritual. This pastor wants us to be Amish. No, I actually don't. Okay? I don't want you wearing potato sacks. Praise God. And if you're Amish, we love you. You can wear potato sacks and we'll go to heaven with you together. To be carnally minded is death. Why does pastor, by the leading of the Holy Ghost, preach against stuff that I like? Why does pastor start stepping on my toes about Tom Brady? Why does pastor get on my case about checking the scores of the games during church? Why does pastor get annoyed with me when I start hanging out with carnal folks that talk about people and not God? I'll tell you why. Because pastor knows that your carnal mind is going to kill you. Pastor knows you're walking down a ledge that's going to destroy your life. And pastor has to stand up against you and tell you, hey, I don't suggest that. Here's the alternative I suggest. But to be spiritually minded is life. And peace. You ever notice how your carnal friends make your life more dramatic? Man, I can hear. I'm pretty sure I saw a mouse run around here.
Pastor, I want life and peace. Be spiritually minded. Pastor, I just want to feel better. Be spiritually minded. You know, your spirit, the spirit, you know what's amazing about the spirit, Brother Rob? The spirit will get you around somebody that's carnally minded and let you know, look for the exit. Because bad company corrupts good manners. The Holy Ghost will start stirring you. And listen, folks, I've been around enough people. There's some people, I won't tell you who you are, that annoy me. I'll tell you why you annoy me. Because the Holy Ghost inside of me does not like the unholiness that you love. And it annoys my spirit. Thus not the scripture said that Jesus says that the zeal of his house has eaten him up. When you get closer to God, the things of God make you happy. And the things of the flesh make you unhappy. I don't care who wins the championship. I want to know, are you going to get your crown? Why? Because somebody actually loves you enough to let you know you're being carnal. Somebody say, Jesus, help us. Oh, don't worry. I still got at least 10 minutes. Amen. How, how many people will give me a minute? Everybody give me a minute. Everybody put your hand up. Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. That's my birthday present. That's all I want is a minute from each of you. So that means I got at least 50 minutes. Praise God. We'll count the kids twice. Praise God. Look what the Bible says about your carnal mind. Verse 7. The carnal mind is enmity against God. I don't like that preacher. You don't like God. <laughs> I, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm, I, it's up there so that you can see it, that it's not my opinion. Because I'm not trying to build a church on popularity and appeasing your flesh and giving you little sermonettes and little psychedelic things that make you feel good and walk out of here and you don't realize you're on your way to hell. I'd rather let you know, hey, your mind, your carnal mind, it doesn't like God. How many times has the Holy Ghost told you, bite your tongue? I'm just telling you, brother. Brother Mandela, you know how many times the Holy Ghost is like, erase that text. I'm like, spent a lot of time on it. Man, that thing looks good. Covered all my angles. Man, it's going to be a good, good smackdown. Holy Ghost says, erase it all. The carnal mind is enmity against God. God tells you to do one thing. Your flesh wants you to do something else. God tells you to build friendships with cer certain types of people. Your flesh wants other certain types of people. You want certain curricular activities. The Holy Ghost wants you to have some other curricular activities. You're at war with yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm bipolar. I am bipolar. If you have the Holy Ghost, you're bipolar. Did you hear me today? I said, if you got the Holy Ghost, you're bipolar. Because the Spirit of God is inside of you telling you something different than your flesh wants to do. And you're wrestling with, should I do it, should I not? Should I listen, should I not? Should I go there, should I not? Should I talk to that person or should I not? And I'm like, I'm constantly like, what do I do? There's no pill for this, praise God. But there's prayer. Eventually, you'll, you'll learn to tell your flesh, listen flesh, I'm just going to be honest with you. You have no idea what you're doing. In fact, you're going to die and go back to the dust you came from. So I'm going to go ahead and listen to the God that made me from the dust of the earth and recognize that his ways are above my ways. His thoughts are above my thoughts. His ways always work. My ways never work. what the Bible says. The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. It cannot be subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Do you, got, do you understand this is why you don't want to read your Bible? <laughs> I 
the reason you wake up and I'm oh, just tired. Oh, the phone's ringing. Oh, this is happening. Oh, I got to do this. You know why it's all happening? Because your flesh is looking for excuses to not be subject to the law of God. You know what the law of God says? Study to show yourself approved unto God. Give yourself to reading. Study the scriptures. Be ready to give an answer of the hope that lieth in you. You wonder why your flesh don't want you in that Bible. Because you'll start learning how to treat other people. And you'll have to be subject to it. You'll start learning how to talk. And you'll have to be subject to it. You'll start learning how to live, and you'll have to be subject to it. And can I give you some pretty good advice? Every time your flesh doesn't like what's in this Bible, I would look at your flesh, and I would say, I ain't listening to you because I'm going to be subject to the law of God. Pastor, well, I just don't think this spiritual stuff is important. Okay, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot, cannot please God. Isn't it amazing how the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please him? The reason we walk in the flesh more than in the spirit is because we don't have faith. We don't have faith because we don't pray. We don't have faith because we don't love the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We, 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 we starve ourselves from the stuff that gets the Holy Ghost to move in our lives. And then we wonder why we're constantly in the flesh. We're going from fight to fight, from complaint to complaint, from gossip to gossip, from anger to anger, from fit to fit, from device to device, from Facebook to Facebook. You're going from all this carnal stuff, and you're trying to figure out, why can't I get over it? You're in the flesh. And the sad part about being in the flesh is that you can't please God. I did not say this. God said you can't please him in the flesh. I didn't say this, folks. I know some of you guys are looking at me like I'm making this stuff up. You can open your Bible, open your Bible app. It's there. Look at verse 9. Talking to the church. Everybody say he's talking to us. But you are in the flesh. But you are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. If so... Be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Because if you have the Holy Ghost, you are not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit now. He elevates it. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Some heavy stuff right here, folks. God is like, he's serious about this stuff. This is some strong language right here. He's saying, if you got the Holy Ghost, you should be able to walk in the Spirit. And he's saying, and if you don't have the Spirit, you don't belong to me. That's not, I'm telling you, this stuff blew my mind when God gave it to me as a new convert. Look at, jump over to verse number, tw uh, go, to, go to verse number 12. Watch this. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, but to live after the, and to live after the flesh. The Bible says we are debtors. To who? You know, you know what some of us do? We get baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and then we just go back to the same stuff we used to do, and we think we're okay. Bible says we're debtors to not do that stuff anymore. He paid the debt once so that you don't go back and accrue it. Have you ever seen people, they, somebody helps them with their debt, pays it off, and they go back and rack it up again, and you're trying to figure out, can you not learn from your previous mistake? Could you not learn that this doesn't work? Could you not work that this leads you nowhere? Could you not learn that this destroys your credit? Not that it matters, praise God. But nonetheless, 
What happens if God calls you on your debt? Can you pay back what he paid for you? And since you can't pay back what he paid for you, you had to be focused on going after the spirit, not after the flesh. Because I don't know if you understand this, but it's a, it was a pretty hefty price tag. Look at verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Who did he tell this to? He told Adam and Eve they were going to die. It took 920 years. Adam died. It may take a while before the wages of sin catches up to you. But I can promise you, if you want to roll the dice against God, keep living after the flesh. And you're going to figure out real quick, you're going to die. You're going to die in your sin. It took the people that were rejecting Noah's message over 100 years. And they thought, nope, we're going to survive this. Baby, you don't know how to float when it starts raining. I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost says. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. How do I stay alive, pastor? I'll tell you how you stay alive. But if you, through the Spirit, mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Do you want to live or you want to die? How do you stay alive? You mortify your flesh. You crucify your flesh. You say no to your flesh and yes to the spirit. Holy Ghost says do this. You say okay. Flesh says go there. I'm not going there. Flesh says talk like this. I'm not talking like that. Flesh says listen to this. I'm not listening to that stuff. Flesh says, watch this stuff. I'm not watching that stuff. Flesh says, read this stuff. I'm not reading that stuff. Flesh says, make friends with those people. I'm not making friends with those people. Flesh says, hit on that person. I'm not doing that. You start mortifying the deeds of your flesh. And that lets you live. Next verse. What the Bible says. For as many... As are filled by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's not what it says. For as many as feel the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as think they have the Holy Ghost, they are the sons of God. For as many... As are led. <laughs> uh, this, this right here, I call this the Pentecostal slayer. Getting filled doesn't save you. Getting filled does not get you to heaven. Getting filled does not make you a son. What makes you a son and an heir and going to heaven is are you being led? I know, I know a lot of filled people, but the number that are led are much less. Because the Holy Ghost will lead you away from some relationships. And it'll lead you into some new ones. And it'll lead you out of an attitude and into a new one. And it'll lead you out of bitterness and into joy. See, you got to be willing to be led of the Spirit. If you're going to be a son of God or a daughter of God. The Bible wants you to know that your identity is tied up in who you're following. Well, I just want to follow. You know, I'm going to be a follower of all these people. You know, what, you, know what, you know what social media has done, Sister Julia? It's taught people to follow a bunch of fools. Watching all kinds of retarded things. I'll tell you why, because you're following fools. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He knew who he needed to follow to be a son of God. And God is telling our church today, you can't be filled and stop there. You need to be led. You got to be leadable. 
you got to be willing to say yes to the Holy Ghost when he says stop. When he says go. It's like the children of Israel in the wilderness. Moses wouldn't move until the cloud moved. He knew I ain't going nowhere unless you lead the way, Lord. You are not led. You're as good as dead. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, Pastor loves us. It's impossible to be led if you've quenched the spirit because you can't even hear him anymore. You can't even feel him anymore. I'm almost done. A few more verses. Actually, four more verses. Verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. We're heirs. We have an inheritance. We have a heaven to get to. We have a hell to avoid. We have a God's who we're going to be in his presence forever, that is the most amazing thing in the world. But you can't get to that if you quench the spirit. Brothers and sisters, week after week, day after day, we are given opportunities to walk in the flesh or in the spirit. We are given opportunities to increase our Holy Ghost fire or extinguish it. And here's my last verse. Why did he say don't quench the spirit? And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, there is no way to be preserved blameless in body and in spirit, and in soul, if you've quenched the spirit. It's an impossible task. You can't do it on yourself, on your own. The Holy Ghost needs to be the one helping us be blameless in all these things. This is my final thought. You can do whatever you want with it, but hey, I'm just telling you. That's what the Holy Ghost told me. There's two types of dilemmas. And I'm closing. I'm turning the iPad off. Praise God. Just a reminder, I can talk a lot without the iPad. Praise God. There's two types of dilemmas, Brother Rob, that you're going to encounter as a new convert. One of them is not inflicted by God. It's, it's something that happens to all of us. And that is you go through a dry spout where you can't feel God. You're just like, my God in heaven, why can't I feel God like I used to? I used to feel him around every corner. I'd read the Bible. I felt him. I felt like praying. I felt this. I felt that. It it just comes so naturally, right? It's like that honeymoon phase in in God. And everything is joy and love and goosebumps. And it's all good. And all of a sudden it dries up and you're going, God, where are you? God, are you out there? That's a good, that's, that's a good one. Because God is teaching you to be grateful for his spirit. God is teaching you to mature. God is teaching you to man up or woman up. That's a good thing when it's God giving you some leeway to see if you've learned anything from him so that now he can just go ahead and let you. Okay, go ahead. You're being tested. What are you going to do? That's a good thing. Not a bad thing. The problem is number two. The problem is when we don't realize we've quenched the spirit. It's us. It's not God. I came, I, I, I came and talked to the Lord for a little bit, Brother Tanner. I, and I'm just going to be open and honest with you, okay? I hope that's okay. Don't hold it against me. Everybody say, Pastor has flesh. He really does. Praise the Lord. As a new convert, I went through this honeymoon phase, Brother Tanner. Everything was goo-goo juice. And my God, I can hit the altar and I can cry and I can have tears and I can respond to the preaching. And I'd get up and I'd clap and I'd get, I, man, I was all about it. I remember there was a season where I started, you know, you start binge watching a few things. You start, ah, let's see what the Lakers are up to. 
Ah, uh, let's see what this person's doing. Holy Ghost says, go pray. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to Applebee's. Holy Ghost says fast. I'm like, nah, I'm having a steak tonight. All of a sudden, I can't feel nothing. I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. But I, I at least knew enough about God to realize there's something wrong. Something's wrong with me or something's wrong in general. So I went to the Lord and I said, God, how can you be in heaven, in earth, and in me and I can't feel you? How can you be preaching and teaching to me and I can't hear you? Holy Ghost spoke to me. That's what he said, Brother Tanner. Humbled me. Is it that I'm not speaking and is it that I'm not present or is it that you're too carnal to realize it? God led me to quench not the spirit. The mercy and grace of God intervened, and I didn't even know that my fire was flickering. My Holy Ghost strength was flickering. My consecration was flickering. My dedication was flickering. And I had no idea about it. So you know what happened, Brother Tanner? My pastor would get to preaching, and you know what I would do? I knew he was preaching to me. So I would get up, and I would amen it. Did I feel like it? No. Did I want to? No. You know why I did it? Because I'm trying to mortify the deeds of my flesh. My pastor started calling things out. And instead of looking to my neighbor so I can amen it for my neighbor, I started amen it for myself. You're right. I'm cardinal. You're right. I got to pray. You're right. I got to fast. You're right. All of a sudden, I started feeling again. And I said, ooh, that feels good again. And then all of a sudden, I knew, okay, there's going to be seasons where it's God. But I'm going to be that guy that is constantly telling God, I hate not feeling your presence. Oh, I hate it. Oh, it makes prayer unbearable. It makes worship so dry. Help me, God. If I got to fast, I'm going to fast. If I got to put YouTube away, I'm going to put YouTube away. If I got to cut off those people, I'm going to cut them off. But I don't want to quench your spirit. Would you stand with me here today? I'm going to tell you what's going on right now. <coughs> don't worry, it's allergies. Praise God. Next Sunday, you're going to get an opportunity to lift up your hands and, and worship. It's going to be your choice if you quench or if you go with it. Today, you're going to have an opportunity to hit the altar or quench the spirit. You're, you're going to have the opportunity to choose life or death, spirit or flesh, God or carnality. God is trying to help our church not quench the Spirit. Because I've been in Pentecost for 16 years, and I'm just going to tell you, this is going to get me in trouble, but I'm just going to say because it it's the truth. God forbid that this ever becomes our spirit, not His spirit. You can go to a football game and they'll hang off the chandeliers. That don't mean it's the Holy Ghost. That, that could be hyped up by flesh because humans have a spirit. We can entertain our spirit. But I want the Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit. I want God's Spirit. Not just here. I want Him in my home. I want Him in my heart. I want Him in my mind. I want Him in my emotions. I want Him in my vehicle. I want Him to be pleased with what I listen to, with what I watch, with where I go, with who I fellowship with. Why? Because I don't know about nobody else. But I love his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. How many people know that here today? Here's your opportunity. What are you going to do? You're going to go to the altar and put your flesh on this altar 
and mortify your deeds and mortify your flesh? Or are you just going to go home? It's your call. This is your altar call. Quench the spirit or dig until you get into the spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not going to force you because every man has a will and every woman has a will. Amen. But I'm here to advise you, choose life. Uh, I'm here to advise you, mortify the deeds of your flesh. I'm here to advise you, get into the spirit right now. Amen. Don't let your pride keep you from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't let your pride keep you out of speaking in tongues. Don't let your pride and your flesh keep you from repenting of the things you've been doing and watching and you know you shouldn't. Oh, come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost loves you too much. He's preaching the truth to you because he loves you. He wants to see you as his child. This is why he preaches to you. Come on, this message is not a message of hate. It's a message of love and hope and life and peace. This is a message of God trying to get you back to your first love. This is a message of God trying to get you back on the right frame of mind. This is God trying to get you to mind after the things of the Spirit and not the things of the flesh. Come on, somebody. Uh, I pray that you're not in church for three, four, five years with no fruits because you quench the Spirit. Uh, I pray that you don't wake up 20 years down the road uh, the same old angry you, the same old bitter you, the same old offended you, the same old rough you because you quenched the Spirit. Uh, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost has sent me to tell you that today is the day that God is trying to get you to walk in the Spirit, to get in the Spirit, to mortify your flesh, to fight off those worldly lusts, to fight off those worldly desires, to tap into the Holy Ghost and learn to walk in it and learn to talk with it and learn to let it talk through you and let it work in you and let it convict you and let it correct you and let it change you and let it transform you. The Holy Ghost is not some spooky tongue-talking thing. It's the all-powerful God that gets inside of you. And the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is working on people right now. Uh, come on. Holy Ghost is trying to save you the way he's trying to save the Thessalonican church. Quench not the spirit. God, talk to me. God, work on me. God, I want to feel you. Oh, God, I want to feel your presence. Whatever I got to do, I want to do it. If I got to pray, if I got to fast, if I got to study, if I got to give up things, if I got to do things, God, whatever it takes, I don't want to quench the spirit. I love your spirit. David said, cast me not out of your presence, and nor please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is here. Come on, what you're feeling right now, that's the Holy Ghost. Come on, keep digging. Keep digging. Come on. Come on, get the flesh off the fire. Come on, don't starve it. Feed it. Praise Him. Talk to Him. Repent to Him. Uh, come on, don't be too cool. I'm not trying to be so cool that I'm cold. I'm not trying to be so professional that I lose prophecy. Come on, let them dig. Let them do heart surgery. Let them do mind surgery. Let them get things out. Let them put things in. Let them teach you to walk. Let them teach you to talk. Let them teach you right now. The Holy Ghost is here. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, give me a renewing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I never want to quench your spirit. I never want to quench your spirit. I never want to quench your spirit, God. I will pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, touch my sister right now. God, help her. Help her do your will. Help her be led of your spirit. Help her stay sensitive to your ways and your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. He loves you. He loves you. Come on, somebody. He loves you. 
dancing with Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, dust off your prayer life. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to have a walk with you. I want to be led of you. Uh, I want to feel your presence. I want to know this is real. In the name of Jesus, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will praise Jesus. you. I will praise you. Come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is here. He cry. loves you. He I will loves you. Cry out. I will praise you. Something in me has to. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. The longer the way, the higher the price, the stronger the pain, the stronger my faith grows, the higher the need, the higher I'll reach, the greater the cost, the more I believe, oh, the longer the way. The higher I'll praise, the stronger the pain, the stronger the faith grows. The greater the cost, the more I believe, oh, I will praise you, I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. I will praise you. Something in me has to. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let the stones cry out. I will praise you. And I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry. I won't let Thank you. 
What a powerful day.